Oh, well, now that we're done all that vlogging test work, I figured I'd get back to what I actually do. Sort of. Birds. All that fun stuff. So, it's been a good day here at the farm. I use the word farm liberally. It's really just a few acres and a pond I put in. But I've had a... This is them for the birds. I've had a lot of good visitors today. A couple of firsts. A lot of rabbits today, too. So it started, I was working um, in my home office, where I also do most of my filming. And uh, all of a sudden I heard a... Rawr, rawr, rawr. You can record that. And I've, ha I've had ravens on the property before. I had a dead rabbit last winter that I found, and I left him out in front of the trail cam to see what would happen. And some ravens got him. And I've heard them a couple times, but never really seen them. So this was startling. And when I looked out the, the window, I was surprised to actually get a glimpse of him. He was right outside my window in a tree. Of course, they didn't have my camera. By the time I got the lens, that was kind of it. He was gone. So then later I was inside the house and I had my lunch and I look out the window, there's a big heron right in my pond. And I don't have any fish. So I don't know what he was after. Probably my only frog. I was hoping this is the road I live on. I was hoping for Sparrow City. Not seeing much, but the pond was bouncing tonight. I got a Cape May Warbler, which might be my first. Finally got a nice shot of a Blue Jay too. So I think we'll probably do a live edit after this and call and I'll show you how the autofocus works. But first we're gonna take a quick, quick little run down Sparrow Alley and just see if, if anything's like hanging out in this evening sun. I'm probably about 20 minutes too late. I actually just saw the sunbeams through the blind on the, the walls of my blind and thought, eh, let's go up to the road and see what we see. So let's see. This is one of my first shots with the uh, Viltrox 13 mil. Uh, trying to test some close focus. Has some leaves in the way, didn't get it perfectly sharp. That was probably at 1.4, yeah, that's kind of cool. It's a neat shot. I don't know if I'll do anything with it, but these are milkweed plants that I put in at the pond, and I was pretty pretty amped to get uh, some monarch caterpillars. Uh, so this one, I think I told the story. I don't even know what that is. Maybe a house wren. This was very far away. Uh, this is a garbage photo. Oh, spoiler. Um, but this was, uh, when I was chasing the, uh, the raven that I think I mentioned in the opening, he flew out this way and I saw a bird and thought I'd see what it was, but that's trash. This is my, how many do we have of them? This is my friend, the heron. This is through glass. This is far, far away, but this is my pond. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty startling. I'm, I'm stoked on my plants coming in. I was just like sitting at my table. Um, my kitchen table looks out. It's probably... Yeah, it'd be about 100 feet. The hose is about 100 feet. So he'd be about 100 feet away. So that's pretty good. This shows you like the power of a crop, uh, 100 feet with 900 millimeters. Uh, but it's through glass. So dirty glass too. I should clean it. So not going to get much, but I'm going to keep one of those. That one's dirty. And this is what happened when I went outside. He flew. It's amazing how fast these birds are. He just jumped into the air and launched. And the funny thing is I was ready for him to fly. Um, I had my shutter turned up a bit to 1250. Uh, this is during the day. I probably had my exposure a little little low. I'll keep that one. That's kind of cool. But uh, I should have zoomed out farther. I was at the full. Oh, actually, no, I wasn't. Um, no, so I was fully zoomed in when I went out to take the shot, and I couldn't find him in the viewfinder. And then I zoomed out, and by that point, I saw saw him. And actually, now that I look at this, this isn't at 600 either. This is at 328. Crazy. 
I wonder how how intense that would have been. Shows you how big they are. If you consider, like, I shoot warblers sometimes that are the size of his foot. So, that's cool. So, I like big stuff. I guess that's a juvenile. Okay, so I'm going to delete that. I mean, the camera was still tracking him. I mean... Actually, that's kind of cool. I'm going to keep that one just in case. That'll delete. That'll delete. Can't see any head, so I can't imagine what I would do with that. Delete. Uh, this is also through glass. I think that's a Baltimore Oriole, maybe. A juvenile male. I'm terrible with birds, so if I'm offending any birders, correct me. You can roast me. That's fine. Uh, okay. What was that? That's a... I think that is a juvenile yellow rump warbler, but I'm going to get rid of that. These are not good. These are just ID shots I was taking from the window. So you can see with my pond, like the trouble with my pond is I still have to cover the rest of this liner and I need things to grow. These are all uh, water plants, but I need like to get plant grass or at least some, maybe some stones. Like I don't want to put in like flagstone. I don't want this to look like a, like a rich pond. I want it to look na natural. So but the dirt doesn't look good. This is my waterfall. I unhooked it, um, pulled that back. And then the hose, I had to put water in it the other day. But these are all garb. Uh, this, what time are we at? 7.22. So this is tonight. We started shooting. Um, oh, my cat's got a dead cricket. So I, I was wondering what I hear. He killed a bug or something. Stop that. Well, I'm busy. That cricket's dead. Um, so I was trying to find him. I didn't have my... Uh, I didn't have a gimbal or anything set up. I need to put one on. And uh, so this was tricky because I was trying to, like, rest the camera. So my these settings were kind of wonky. You can see here, 12.8, 2000 F9. Doesn't make any sense. And I kept... Uh, my aperture ring kept, like, scraping. I think that's a Cape May Warbler, but we're going to delete all these. Still delete. Delete. I'm deleting these because I know I have some better shots. So here we go. Um, I backed off so you can get down to 7.1 if you're not quite at 600. Um, I ended up getting off the 12.8 too, but I don't know if I did it with with the warbler. So that's better. That's like so you can see that's super noisy, but I actually I mean I'm I'm actually a fan of like Fuji noise. Um, let's just let's play with this one for a second. So we're using on one. Uh, no noise. No, we're using on one photo raw 2022. And we're going to use no noise. So you just come down here into your tab, you click it. You don't have to export see what happens. It completely cleans up the noise. That's pretty nice. I could add some sharpening, but sometimes I pull down the enhanced detail slider, but on raws, a lot of times I don't. So that's pretty good. I'm happy with that for a 12, 800, uh, Raw. Now, the only thing I'm not sure, maybe there's a setting. I, a lot of times after I edit things, my metadata goes away. I'm going to have to figure that out or ask them. But I'm going to keep that. I like this one. Let's just see if I've got it better. So I'm not going to delete anything that I might want to use. i got to go back to browse. So that's garb. See, so later I pulled down my shutter. I didn't need to be at a thousand. I think I was just there in case like a bird moved. But still, I mean, yeah, that's super noisy. But I don't hate the Fuji noise and the feather details like really tight. It's kind of grainy back here, but again, like that cleans up as you saw really well. I'm gonna keep that. Anything that looks sharp where I have the eye. So you can see. I mean, <clears throat> if we want to talk about autofocus on the bird, I'm trying to try to keep this video from being crazy long. But I mean, even as he's. Uh, or she, I don't know, as she moves the eye back, um, no problems. Never lost focus once. So this is why I deleted the ones at the pond earlier, because I knew I had these. Uh, I'll probably delete a bunch of these too. This is, I need, I need to do some landscaping here. This looks like a septic tank. Uh, but this is the angle. Now the trouble I have, and maybe I'll troubleshoot this over the winter. I'm gonna have to ask like my pond people on Reddit or something. But my liner, I didn't, I didn't, 
I met, I mismeasured by about a foot. So my liner at the back end, the pond doesn't come up all the way. The liner comes right to about here. So if I fill the water over there, this would flood. In a perfect world, I'd have the water right up to here. So I need to see if maybe I can put another liner along that edge or something. Um, or I could even potentially, I've heard you can like melt liners together. So maybe I move the dirt off and then can melt an extension or something. That'd be worth playing with because I'd like to see what I can do, but lots of feather detail there, but let's see if there's a good pose. Uh, so the autofocus drifted a bit. There we got him, he was bouncing around. I was at one five hundredth. Most of these are really sharp. You can tell even without them rendering, they're sharp. Missed a couple. Sharp, 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 sharp. But I don't really need these. I have lots of pictures of these guys. If there's a good one in here, I'll keep it. Might not be. Um, this is another, this is my little little guy. That's like my little caterpillar friend. To get the burst. Um, now these, the, again, these settings, I changed it later so I can't control aperture on the ring because as I was resting my lens on the... Um, on the railing of my blind, I kept like rolling it and it kept like changing my aperture. So obviously ignore these settings. Like this should have been F8 and this should have been like 6,400, which would have been a lot nicer, but let's just play with one of these. Uh, I, I really do love the looks I get out of, um, out of this, this branch. So I'm losing a bit of the sharpness but I am still pretty happy with that. Now you can also do this. So we can add an effect, add dynamic contrast. I kinda like that. But you know what? It is adding some to the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna invert and then we're gonna paint it in. And we'll just, we don't need to be perfect. Now, on one is coming out soon. Let's do this too. This, this is cool. They're coming out soon with a subject detect that Lightroom has. It's the only feature I miss from Lightroom. And let's turn down the opacity a bit. There is no effect. Let's keep it in like right about there. And just for fun, let's see what the auto, auto AI does here. Well, that's kind of bright. Woof. Oh, let's reset that. But I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with where this one could go. There's a series of these, so let's just try some curves. Let's try like that little that little matted look. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Maybe like that. Whoa, no, no, no. That kind of pops. And what else do we need? I think we need one little, one more little thing. Um, so we're gonna go to our local brush. Let's just bring up our shadows a little in the face. I think that works for me. Actually, you know what? There's a little bit too much contrast. Hmm, maybe not. Let's go back to the curves. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we're gonna export that one. I'll probably, probably put that one maybe on the old Flickr. I like that. So I'm pretty happy with that for a uh, 12,800 image. I don't know if it's my best pose. Maybe it's not, but I, yeah, I'm gonna, some friends have suggested I put like some peanut butter or something, like drill some holes into the backside of the railing, um, even put some seeds. And I think I'll do that because it's uh, it's really nice, bulky, um, the right time of day, the light's nice, the branch is natural, the birds frame really well on it. It's just like a perfect bird perch. Some fledgling robins, I found a dead one in my yard. I'll delete most of these. Well, here's our friend on the, perch let's just see if there's one here to play with or 
there's a good head tilt. Mm-hmm. Delete most of these. I'm not culling them right now. Right now, usually on my first call, I just delete the ones that are junk. And then I'll come back through later. Often, if I've like had a chance to think about it. I like that head pose, but I don't like the framing, how low it is. But I don't, I like that framing kind of, but I don't like the head pose. Nah, there's none of them that are good enough. The doves, more blue jay friend. Okay, let's play with this too. Okay, uh, so that's pretty good. That does a really nice job bringing some detail back. That was only 3,200. What to do with this one? Should we try another curve? I'm kind of new to curves. I still don't really understand them. I, you know, when you're new to curves, you go like too ham fisted. That's me. But I'm not really. It's kind of like a salt on the senses here. Well, let's see what happens if we bring the shadows up. What if we brought the whites down a little? Shadows a little more, contrast a little more. Mm -hmm. Mids? What do our mids do? Uh, that's all right. It's so bright. If we bring it down, but push the shadows. That's starting to look kind of goofy. I could do more with this. I might come back to this. I don't immediately love it though. So this is why I like on one a lot because I hated having to go back and forth to, uh, ooh, that's nice. I hated having to go back and forth to Topaz. Dang, okay, let's try and see, do I have the detail to go in that tight? Let's see if I can get it. Alright. You know one thing I wish that editors would do is that uh I wish when you did a hundred percent crop, I wish you could just like push a button and like take that crop. That's not bad. Let's try some dynamic contrast. It brings out a bit of pop. Let's, uh, t -t 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 what do we want here? Let's bring up our shadows, bring down our highlights. Let's bring down our exposure, bring up our shadows a little more. It's a tough crop. Let's bring down the opacity. On Actually, you know what? Let's try one other thing. Let's try the sharpening, see how that looks. I think that looks better. And let's try one more thing. Let's try some shadows and see if we can get any of that eyeball. Oh, it's not looking good. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> What if we kill the highlights? What if we kill the whites? What is he doing? No, that looks terrible. I always think like highlights are gonna do more. I don't wanna make him look like he has a cataract, so. Okay, we'll keep it like that. I think that one's gonna get an upload too. I feel good about that. Okay, let's keep going. Where are we at? Where are we at? Making pretty good progress. So there's some more here. Oh boy. That's what I was going for. Uh, this is down to 250. I wanted to keep that ISO low. He's even closer here. Let's see if there's like a really nice, that one's blurry. Is there a really nice pose? Maybe there's not. Ooh, grumpy. That's how I feel about the Blue Jays baseball team right now. Gromp City. I don't 
don't know if I ever, oh, blurry, kind of blurry. Did I ever get the pose? You know, it's funny, he was, I thought he might get ready to take off, so I'm like, ah, let's crank that shutter. And then I was like, he took off, like, as I was thinking about it. Uh, this kingbird, I, he was taking uh, dives at the pond to splash around, and I thought he would do something, but he never did. So. Finch, but back in the mud, just delete all these. Well, what was this? All right, this is on my walk. That is a tern flying overhead, and there were a couple of those, so that's pretty cool. That is, I'm not sure. Let's take a screenshot, and we will send to some friends, and I'm just gonna add some sort of turn to the property sighting. Okay, and let's keep going. Now these are super far, late at night. Now this, pretty sure that's a crow. Shutter was too far down. But I just wanted to see what was going on here. So the autofocus tracked it fine, but never got anything. This is kind of cool. Let's see what happens. Sometimes I just use the auto and see like what's the system want to do on shots that I'm not sure. It's like cranked. Is there any color here? Oh, there's so much blue. No. Okay, I'm scrap. Uh, so these are, I assume, bohemian wax wings. I don't think I have, I don't think I've seen cedars around here, but I have a hard time telling them apart. Uh, they've been pretty plentiful. I have a little video. I'll insert, uh, probably insert here. Well, I'm not getting what I wanted, but these wax wings are pretty cool. They come to the pond a lot, although not usually this many at once. There's maybe two dozen or so. A bunch there and then a couple flittering around. Should have brought the Viltrox. Did some white anglies. This, okay, here we go. I know specifically there's one shot here. This is the Eastern Kingbird in a tree. And there was one shot. Oh, that's it. I wanted that. Let's just see, did I get anything else cool? No, it was just the one where he was he was singing and I used the burst of the X-H2S and I'm only in 15 frames per second. Oh, there's another one, I got it, I got it twice. I'm only in 15 frames per second and the camera, even shooting raw at 15, I would call it almost a uh, unlimited buffer size. It never came close to buffering out on me. I don't know, maybe you'll know. Are these cedar or bohemian? Can you tell from behind? Can you tell here? If you know, please tell me. Tell me how to tell them apart. People tell me, but I don't know. Um, okay, we are almost done. We're in the last, well, within the last hundred shots. What's this little guy? Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so at 3,200, I wasn't having it. At 8,000... Starts getting brighter. Look at those feet. I think we'll take another print screen of that. Just ask my pals what we're looking at. Now I did take some steps here too to also lower the the old ISO. Eventually, I think. I'm looking for a good pose. Those feet look so cool. Uh, let's just see what happens here. This is so much better than the Lightroom Topaz workflow for me. Some people don't like how on one flows, and I don't know, I just think it's so easy. And I think No Noise does as good a job as Topaz or DxO. They all have preferences. That's kind of neat. I'm going to just... Uh, oh, you know what I didn't even do? I didn't even do anything. Let's just auto it. Whoa! Let's... Uh, What's AI match do? Oh no, I think I gotta tell it. That doesn't look good. Uh, okay, let's just add a curve. Let's just 
pull you down a bit. Let's just pull you up a bit. No, let's, and let's just turn up the old raw exposure a little bit. And yeah, that's fine. That's a decent little little shot. I just want to see what that is. So we got more of this guy. Ooh, see, I'm probably it's kind of kind of neat. Look at that full on foot. It's neat. Birds. Some birds are neat. Again, the feet on this thing. What is this bird? It's probably just like the most normal bird. Uh, this is the photo I'm going to mourn. I, I didn't, just the color and the texture and then the field behind. This is uh, my eastern kingbird. But I didn't really, I mean, it focused on him, but he's so small. I was in the process of like turning off subject detect. I literally got one crack at him. But I still think there is a photo here. I just have to find it. I do think there's a, a picture here though. Maybe maybe we need a little a little more vibrance. Be there. Uh, what's happening with our haze? I don't mind the increased haze. Definitely don't want less structure. And hmm, just for fun, what happens with a vignette? Big old softy and just like in the corners. No, I like it better without. Almost always better without. Okay. And what else we got? More of these little grumpy, grumpy bird. So grumpy. I'll delete these. Uh, this is a picture. Sometimes I like to take pictures of posts or uh, of, of perches that I would have wanted. I'm like, man, this barbed wire broken off would have been so nice. If a bird was just like right there. And then same here. If, if uh, here I focus on the, the background. But if I've been able to get uh, a bird right on the wire and then blurred out the field, it would have been juicy. Now here, this Iki, I think I ended up wanted to like really get as much detail as I could out of him. I wonder if there's anything here. I'm not sure what that's going to do. Uh, let's just, I don't even think I need to. I was going to heal out that branch, but I'm just going to crop in anyway. Probably nothing. Sometimes it's just, yeah, I mean, it depends what you're putting. If you're going to put your images on Instagram, you might look at all this and say like, wow, you're like, you're hamming it here. You're overkill. But. Instagram ruins image quality, so. I kind of like that. Oh, you know what? Let's get rid of that little guy. I kind of like that. Is there any color here? No. Do we need more, like, blue temperature? Yeah, beautiful. Okay. We're going to export that one. And what else we got? A couple more of him. I think that's about it. This guy. Oh, yeah. What's this? I think that might be a Savannah Sparrow. Let's just see. I think I got a little closer to it. I did get closer. But did I get him in the light as much as that first shot, actually? That might have been, nope, that's it. So that's kind of cool with the floaty stuff. Hmm, 
All righty. I think that's it. I'm going to take a couple of uh, screen grabs to ask some friends what we got. And that's it. So I'm going to post this all together and call it a day. Thanks for watching. And uh, final comment, I guess I, I just wanted to point out the autofocus. So we just went through a few hundred pictures. And I mean, the autofocus missed way, way less than 10% for sure. I mean, there, there weren't 30 misses from outright blur in there, I don't think. So the bird eye detect, I used it almost the whole time. Sometimes in cases like this, real small, sometimes I would switch to uh, point if it was having a hard time. I mean, this was 8, 12, sun setting right around that time, this time of year, so. But it's really good. With the camera, I'm still working on the video side, but uh, fantastic for stills. See you later. Well, these are the sunsets out here. And that was pretty successful. I think I actually had a couple of like dream shots that presented themselves that I kind of whiffed on. Um, just focus more on the bird and less on the overall picture. And a few times like things popped out that all of a sudden the background was really impressive. Mostly the usuals, but uh, I haven't been down the road in a while. Probably not since I built the blind because I went a few times late winter when I thought like sparrows and stuff would have arrived and I got totally skunked. So it was grumpy. It's not a far walk. I usually only go 500 meters or so one direction, but yesterday I had a pretty long hike for me looking for shorebirds and ended up finding some, which was good, but that video is still being edited and will be up shortly. But uh, anyway, my feet were pretty sore. I haven't really talked about it, but this is a quick refresher or a quick introduction. I was born with uh, bilateral club feet. And at the time I was told it was the worst case they'd seen at uh, Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto. So essentially it means both of my feet turned completely in and then completely up. So if you take your toes and imagine that they were touching your inner calf, that's what both of my feet were like. Now, luckily, this is pretty correctable these days, but I'm 36, and it's uh, 10 surgeries later. They did what they could, but I'm a little gimpy. So that's why I'm such an advocate for kayak shooting and blind shooting, because for me, you know, about a one-kilometer walk is probably the extent of where I'm comfortable. So you just got to learn your limits. This little road is a good good distance. I mean, I live, it's beside my house, so it's a good spot when there's birds. And today I think was pretty productive overall. I thought there'd be more sparrows. Sometimes this is sparrow heaven. I have, also haven't seen any Phoebes at all this year. I don't think I've seen one Phoebe this year. But what am I complaining about? Look at that, you got that sunset. I had my first heron at the pond, probably ate my only frog, and I saw my first raven. Oh, that's not true, actually, if I can find it. I saw a raven a couple months ago, right here, right where my driveway comes up to the road. I think I was going to get gas or something. I had my camera, and as I look right over this farmer's field, I see a big black bird flying, and I always check to see if it's a raven or just a crow. All of a sudden, I look, he's got something in his mouth. And I zoom in, I take the picture and I zoom. The image quality is terrible. But what is it? It's a mouse. You see all these videos of like herons and stuff eating bullfrogs. And I thought this was equally cool. I wish I gotten something good out of it, but something to remember it by. So I assume he probably hunted that thing down and just, just gobbled them. And watching the way that the pair of them ripped apart the rabbit one one winter, which I probably have something that I can show here on the trail cam. Pretty nuts. So anyway, I am going to call it a night. I'm meeting my friend due to the Fuji in the morning. And we're going Shorbin again, but this time we're going to go to my new secret spot. But I found a parking lot where I don't have to walk so far. And we're going to get there before dawn and try to get some shots before the heat haze. So... Thanks for the support. See you later.